So what is the consistent PLS algorithm, and when should we use it versus the regular PLS algorithm? Now the same goes for bootstrapping. There's a consistent and there's a regular. Have you ever wondered why there's a consistent and what it means and when you're supposed to use it? I'm going to tell you. So it's fairly simple. Uh, well, <laughs> it's fairly simple to simplify. The short story is consistent was added to smart PLS in order to account for um, the correlations between reflective factors. Reflective factors are the ones where the indicators are the ones being pointed to rather than, if I were to switch this around for a moment, rather than, where to go? Here we go, switch between, rather than the indicators pointing at the factor. You can see, if I zoom in here a little bit, um, you can see in this case, skill acquisition items point to skill acquisition. This is uh, an indication of a formative factor, whereas if I were to reverse that, and the arrows point outward toward the indicators, then it's reflective. PLS was uh, designed initially not to account for the correlations among reflective factors. PLS is really handy for formative factors. So, uh, but as time went on, more people are using PLS for everything. So, the creators of Smart PLS 3 built in a way to account for those correlations among reflective variables. So if you want to account for those correlations, which you should um, if you have reflective factors, then you'll want to run the consistent algorithms, uh, both for the regular algorithm and for bootstrapping. All it does in the bootstrapping is it, it runs the PLS algorithm many, many, many times. Um, and if you add consistent, then it runs the consistent algorithm many, many, many times. So again, that's when you use it, is when you have reflective factors. This model is all reflective, and so I should be using the consistent algorithm. If, though, I had a formative factor, then I would be using the regular uh, PLS algorithm. Although if I use the consistent one when I have a formative factor, it actually is fine. It's just when I have all formative factors, then I don't need to run the consistent algorithm because I don't have any reflective factors uh, to correlate. So that's how you use it. Hope that helps and clarifies or doesn't confuse further.